Rancho Palos Verdes. Well, the day is back. Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. That's right, Maria. The countdown is on for the 37th annual Whale of a Day celebration right here at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center on Saturday, April 9th from 10 to 4. So mark your calendars. We're going to want to see you right here. That's right. Now, the event has been really on hiatus for the last couple of years due to the pandemic, but they are back and ready to go. For sure. This is a community event that's one of the largest in the city. Yes. Of course, it's co-sponsored by our city and the docent group Los Serenos to Point Vicente. And the focus, of course, is the whale migration happening along our coast. The whale migration, that's right. And really, we get so much information about the whales, but really, the... I th I think the leader of it is Emily Rodine from the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and she's going to tell you all about Well of a Day, so let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Emily Rodine. I'm with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes Recreation and Parks Department, and I run the beautiful Point Vicente Interpretive Center. And this year, we're so excited to bring back Whale of a Day. So it's been on a two-year hiatus. The last time we had it was in 2019, and this will be my first year managing this special event. Um, I'm really looking forward to bringing some new elements, but still continuing on with a lot of the community favorites and kind of putting my own little touch on the event. Give us a rundown of the activities, the participants, and of course the partnership with the city, with you and Los Serenos to Point Vicente, who present Whale of a Day with the city. So Whale of a Day is one of our biggest events. Um, it rivals 4th of July. We get about 3,000 people in a day. Um, and this event comes together by the city staff and the Los Serenos docents and volunteers of Point Vicente. Um, it's really a group effort, and they're a volunteer organization that they'll be running you know, face painting, games, uh, crafts for kids, all kinds of fun activities. We have live entertainment lined up, food trucks from all over the place, a lot of family fun activities. So we're really looking forward to it. How about highlight what will be new this year? So new this year, we have some exciting entertainment. We have a percussionist group from Ted Katz coming, um, and they'll be opening up on the stage that day, followed by the Aviators. They're a rock and surf type music, so we're looking forward to those incorporations for this year. We also have um, exciting news from the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. They're going to be bringing a 50-foot inflatable gray whale. So unfortunately, one of the big things that we'll be missing from Whale of a Day this year, and I know a lot of people look forward to, is really getting into the Point Vicente Lighthouse grounds and touring it. Um, but due to COVID safety protocols and the U.S. Coast Guard protocols, um, the grounds just will not be open for 2022. And because we're talking about safety protocols for our viewers and people planning to come, what should they know about Whale of a Day? Obviously, outdoors. Um, we can be unmasked, but there's indoors tours of PVIC. What, what do you want the community to know? So as of current, there definitely will be masking required indoors inside if you're touring the interpretive center. But as you're out in the park grounds, feel free to not wear that mask and just enjoy the open air. You said you're new to running Whale of a Day this year, but you're not new to the city and the event. So share some of the history of how this evolved and um, just some fun facts about Whale of a Day. So this event started back in the 80s, so it's been quite some time. We're on like the 37th year, so I think it's just really grown a lot before um, it was more of in a designated areas within the park grounds. But now the event really spans across the entire grounds of the Interpretive Center. So it's just a lot of new things that have been incorporated over time. And like I said, we're going to be adding some more things this year. So we're really looking forward to it. And it is about the community coming together to celebrate the whale migration. This is There's no better place than to be here on the peninsula at PBIC to watch for whales. Um, talk about that element. Yeah, so we are one of the premier whale watching locations, actually the premier whale watch watching location in Southern California. You can't get a better location to come out and watch, and that's particularly why the American Cetacean Society, the Los Angeles chapter, conducts the annual gray whale census on our patio. So they're out here from December to about the middle of May, and I tell you, they have seen plenty of whales this year, so we're super excited, and we're trying to phone them in to come on out for whale of a day. We're hoping we have a good turnout. Um, so yeah, just be patient and Keep an eye out on the ocean when you're here enjoying the event. Do you have some favorite whale trivia you want to share with our viewing audience? Uh, one thing uh, to know about whales is they can they swim three to five miles per hour, but it's 24-7, so they don't stop. Um, so that's a great thing. They also have a spectacular blow, so it's a heart shape. So if you get an opportunity, we do have some pictures of that in our exhibit that we opened up um, when we reopened after the COVID closure. So go inside and check it out. Uh, they also can eat uh, a ton of amphipods in a day. That's a huge amount. So they can take in a lot, but they're pretty big 
big guys. They're up to 50 feet long and weigh about 40 tons. So that's a lot of food they need to support them. Well, there's going to be a lot of food here at Whale of a Day, a lot of fun. What are you looking forward to most, Emily? I think one of the things is just the return of such a big community event, and it really is a whole team effort in recreation and parks. We get support from our public works department. We'll have some of the committees in the city here representing and sharing all that. So it's just the team effort and bringing everyone together. I think we've missed that. And so just to see all these powers come together and make it happen and just the smiles on everyone's faces is just the highlight of my day. And for the folks watching that have never come to Whale of a Day, there is a lot to navigate and see. Do you have any, any tips on how to go about the grounds and you don't want to miss anything. My first tip would be make sure you park at City Hall. We're going to have the free shuttles coming down from there. So the parking is free and the shuttle's free. Um, and it'll be going constantly throughout the event. I would say maybe stop by the Recreation and Parks booth. It'll be by the main um, central area of the event. We'll have event programs. We also have um, a passport activity that the kids can pick up at the booth and they can go around and collect stamps from different organizations or vendors or other elements that are going on for a prize. So definitely check us out and we'll let you know all the ins and outs of the day. All right, as we wrap it up to let you get back uh, to all your whale of activities here, any other special announcements for the communities or happenings right here at Point Vicente Interpretive Center, which is open almost every day of the year? Uh, we are working on right now, we have a great committee of docents and city staff, um, a new sperm whale jaw exhibit. We don't anticipate it to be ready for whale of a day, but maybe closely after. Um, so just keep an eye out for that new element. And then for recreation and parks, we have other events coming up like our popular egg hunt. So that'll be available online for registration soon. It's for kids one to eight years old. Um, and it's just a great time. So I'd say just go to rpvca.gov slash parks for more information and opportunities about things happening. We hope to see everyone here at Whale of a Day on Saturday, April 9th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Well, Emily is amazing. She works 24-7, and really everybody has a whale of a time every time they come to PVIC. You mentioned 24-7. I love the fact that she shared that whales, you know, never sleep. They never, never sleep for 24 hours a day. They are moving, and also the blow, shaped yes, like, like a, a heart. heart. You I learned it. something new today, Liz. Yes. Well, whale of a Day is a day full of love. It's also about whale watching and whale watching season, which is going on right now right now and there are census takers that are on the back patio here at PVIC and we're going to catch up with their leader Elisa Shulman Janiger and she's going to tell us all about the gray whale <music> Our Gray Whale Census Project is one of the longest running citizen science projects in the world. We're all volunteers, including myself. What we do is we have teams of generally between three and six, seven volunteers who are on site from sunrise to sunset in shifts. Some shifts are three hours, other people will come up to six hours. It depends upon what people are able to do because we're all volunteers and that's how we're able to keep the project going. So we have these trained volunteers, people that I've trained and uh, anchored by people who have a lot of experience with the project, who are watching from um, one direction to the other in certain sections, and we're looking for whales blowing, fluking, breaching, particularly focused on gray whales. Our main focus of our project is to count the number of gray whales passing by here. We're trying to look at how many are per group and if there's any calves and looking at the behavior they're doing. Besides gray whales, since we are out here from sunrise to sunset seven days a week, December 1st to about May 25th or so, we're also looking for different species of marine mammals and keep track of them, like sperm whales, blue whales, humpback whales, killer whales, minke whales, fin whales, sperm whales, bottlenose dolphin, common dolphin, white-sided dolphin, rhesus dolphin, uh, about 20 different species of marine mammals we have seen from this location. It's immensely uh, species rich. So gray whales are a medium sized whale. They migrate from Alaska. Most of them are up in Alaska feeding in this area, the Chukchi and Bering Sea. And they take about two, two and a half months or so to migrate down the coast to Mexico. And then they spend time a couple months in Mexico, which are called the breeding and calving lagoons, four major lagoons in Mexico. 
and then they migrate back up the coast. Now what's interesting, as a lot of people don't know, is that they, most of the females get pregnant migrating south. They ovulate in late November, early December. So there's breeding activity going down the coast as they travel in groups of two, three, four. The biggest group we saw was 23, January 20th, a few years ago. 23 gray whales at least traveling together, which was absolutely astounding. If they don't get pregnant at that time, female can ovulate about 40 days later, which could account for later season calves. There's been a lot of mating activity been reported recently in March. They're not gonna get pregnant at this time of year. They're just not able to because females aren't ovulating. So they're not necessarily mating uh, just to have babies, they're just mating, socializing. So they go down the coast here and these are their nursery lagoons and they spend time nursing the calves who could nurse 12 to 20 times a day on milk that's super rich in butter fat, up to 53% butter fat, born maybe 12 to 16 foot long. We call them pickles, wrinkled pickles, really dark in color here, and hanging out with the mom, a super strong mom and calf bond. Several births for gray whales have actually been documented. About half of them are head first and half are tail first. People think they've got to be born um, one way or the other, and it's actually a bit of a mixture. And this is a fabulous place for you to bring your family, just come out, particularly during the week when there's fewer people here. Um, it's a great facility. People uh, go walking, hiking. There's a long fence line here. We've got the uh, Point Vicente Lighthouse half a mile from us right here, which is a lighthouse that we would see from our other original spot, Marine Land. Off of here, we have a rock called Pyramid Rock that's shaped like a pyramid and whale rock, and these are landmarks for us. When we see a gray whale coming uh, toward us, whale rock here got its name. We had one volunteer who kept pointing at that rock and saying, there's a whale, there's a whale, there's a whale. But it wasn't, it was a rock that was producing if the waves hit just so and super high crash, it actually produces a blow, it looks like a blow. But she didn't care. Every time there was a splash, but every day she saw whales, it was actually a rock. So kind of in making in front of her and in honor of it looking like the blow of a whale, that's why we call that whale rock and it's a key point for us here. So you can see right now we've got visitors all along the fence line. The interpreter center has painted numbers along the fence posts that are for use for us originally, but also for them. So we sit, we're sitting here and spotting a whale and we're looking through our binoculars, which have compass and reticle in them. And the compass could tell us what direction the whale is for us. And the reticles will tell us how far from the horizon. And for the public, it doesn't help me to say, okay, it's at 320 degrees and 30 mil, that won't mean anything to them, but I could say it's over post 125. Depending upon where you are in the patio, that might be a little bit different, but it gives you a reference mark. So it's really helpful for them. So hopefully you guys can come out and uh, see us here and come out and watch and see what you can see out here. It's absolutely fantastic. We get ospreys uh, hunting for fish and occasionally a bald eagle, occasionally a sea otter. Uh, my favorite killer whales I've seen here so quite a few times. So hopefully you come out and visit us and enjoy this absolutely fantastic facility at an unmatched area with over 20 different kinds of marine mammals and up teen birds. You know, Liz, those census takers are so dedicated. They're always out there on the back patio, and we see more and more every year. I know. It's a fabulous organization, the American Cetacean Society. Check them out. Their L.A. chapter, again, the dedication. We can't thank them enough for what they do. It's called Citizen Science, and That's right. it's, sort of, it's why we're here celebrating the whales. And you know what happens if they ring the bell? I love that. Then they get to, somebody saw a whale. I love that part, too. A whale That's of the so day fun. when you hear the bell ringing. The whales are singing. That's right. Um, you know, it's always about education and getting mm -hmm. facts about the whales throughout Whale of a Day. And the docent organization, Los Serenos de Point Vicente, mm -hmm. that are here at PVIC giving tours, leading tours on that day, they bring out the whale wagon. They do. So let's travel over to the wagon on the back patio. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, I'm Joyce Gesso, and we're with, uh, and this is Brian Johnson with uh, Los Serenos, at the, and we're at the Point Vincenti Interpretive Center today, and we're going to talk about the whales in our whale wagon. And Brian's going to act like a guest, and I'm going to answer questions for him. You know, guests ask all sorts of questions. When is the best time to see the whales? They are here any time between uh, the December 1st to the end of May. We're here, there's eight of us on the committee that are here to 
answer questions on the weekends when weather is permitting. So what kind of whales do we usually see here? Well, during this time, it's the gray whale that we see predominantly, and this would be the gray whale. Why do we mostly see the gray whale? <laughs> because they're doing a migration right now, and they're going down to eat amphipods. These are little shrimp, and that's what they're eating. They're a bottom feeder. They eat like this, and they use their tongue to push out the sand that they pick up down on the floor. They're a baleen whale, and this is the same keratin that your hair and your nails are made of. But this is in their mouth, and it's a filtering system. These are uh, mysticetes, and they have baleen. These are tooth whales, and so they eat bigger things. If their favorite food are these gammered amphipods, why don't they just stay up in Alaska all the time and eat and eat and eat? That's a good question, because it freezes over. They have to come up to breathe. The blowholes are on the top of their head, so they have to come up to breathe. So when it, about three months they're eating, and then they make a 12 to 14,000 mile journey round trip. And they go down to the breeding and mating grounds in the lagoons in Mexico. In the that lagoons seems like in Mexico. a pretty long way to go. It's a long way. It takes about three months for traveling and three months down here. So if the calf or the calf is born here, travels up here and it'll come back down here by himself. If mom gets pregnant here, she goes back here, nurses the baby, and then So they have babies down there in Mexico, huh? Mm -hmm. how, how, That's their mating place. How many uh, pounds do the babies weigh when they're born? Oh big. Twelve to fifteen hundred pounds. Wow. And can be fifteen feet long. And, and do they they drink their mama's milk, huh? Definitely, definitely. How much do they drink every day? About a hundred gallons, believe it or not. Wow. They and nurse about uh, six or eight times a day. And is, is whale milk pretty good? Oh, definitely. Uh, it's 50% fat, whereas human milk is only 2%. <laughs> wow, so they get big pretty fast. Huh? Very fast. So how big do they get when they're full grown? About 40,000 pounds. And how, how long? About 53 feet, about the size of a school bus, a oh, yellow wow, school bus. Wow, that is pretty big. But you think about the blue whale, that is about two school buses long. It's wow. the largest mammal on earth. And These are all mammals. They're like us. Wow. And they eat just, what do the blue whale eat? That, they love krill. They have a, they're very particular about what they eat. These are also a type of shrimp. Here's a little picture of it. Um, but the, the gray whale will eat these also. You know, they'll eat along the way if they find some. They'll eat small fish and the krill because they can filter them out. They can't eat a big thing like a squid or anything These like that. They're so a, small, they're mm -hmm. hardly bigger than a grain of rice. How can the biggest living thing on the planet eat nothing but these? But they need 40 ton a day. 40 tons a day? Which is like two carloads. Wow, that's a lot. It's a huge amount. So when you just see one swimming by, how can you tell what kind of whale it is? Oh, that's. There's a number of ways, especially the gray whale. It has a particular blow. Today it would be kind of hard because when in the, uh, it's not windy, it has a heart-shaped blow. It's the only whale that does. Um, because they're, when you're doing whale senses and they have the binoculars and the scopes, each of their flukes are different, their tails are different. Um, also the gray whale has barnacles and you see these a lot on the gray whale. This looks like this. These are a parasite, and they live on the hide of the whale, and they, their little feet are up in the air, and they eat plankton from the ocean as their food. So they ride along to eat, really. So, and you can see the blowholes here, two blowholes, why they get the heart-shaped blow. They also have lice. They're, they're all species specific. These are the lice, and they're about the size of your end of your little finger. And they're usually orange, and the solution makes them white. Another way that is different from other whales is the gray whale has the dorsal ridge. It has uh, 10 to 12 little dorsal ridges, and that's caused by the vertebrae, which is this, your backbone. And then 
the disc, which also helps us to move, helps the whale to move. But this is interesting because the back of the disc has oil in it, so it helps the whale to stay afloat. Here's the things that make them a mammal. Okay. So they're warm-blooded like we are. Okay. We're not like a, a snake. They have hair with them. Where do they have hair? On their no rostrum or their nose. Really? Yeah. And when the, they think that maybe that hair is what stimulates mom to let down her milk. Because mom has no external mammary glands. It's okay. just a slit on both sides, like down in here. Uh-huh. And so that hair kind of says, hey, mom, let down your milk. I'm hungry. And so it disappears as they get older. They, have, they breathe air with their lungs, just like we do. And then they have uh, live births, like we do, and they feed with milk. A friend of mine told me that one of the best thing about the whale wagon was getting like temporary tattoos. Oh yes, if you would hand me that. We have a, a box, and children love this. We have three different kinds People of- People my age love them too. <laughs> Yes, and we have stamps like the orca, the dolphin, the fluke. Whoop, That's the what blue we call whale. the whale's tail is a fluke, huh? Uh-huh, okay. definitely. And the gray whale, which is one we see here. I want so, that big one, the big you want the blue, blue whale? whale. That's oh, the okay. biggest animal on the whole planet. Definitely. Ever. Definitely. Bigger than the dinosaurs? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you can see. Look at the size of a dinosaur. Yeah, he's not even half as big. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Look at us. We look yeah, like, we're a, tiny. like an ant. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to want to have a stamp. Blue okay? I, it's a blue whale. Blue's perfect. Well, that's violet. <laughs> well, it's okay. I'll give you blue. All right. Okay. There you go. Wow, it came out pretty nice. <laughs> That's great, Joyce. Well, thanks for teaching me all about whales today at the Whale Wagon. You're most welcome. And you all come down here and see us too sometime. We're here from December 1st to the end of May, every weekend, as I say, weather permitting. And COVID permitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm getting more and more excited to be here on Saturday, April 9th for the 37th Whale of a Day, 10 to 4. Mark your calendars like we've said. What do you love That's about right. that day? You know, I love just really being out with the community. It's so beautiful out here. And, of course, that kettle corn, I will be having the kettle corn. There's no event that you go to with Maria that she's not after the kettle corn. You know about me, a Whale of a Day. I get to the booth where you can make your own Whale of a Day hat. That's I always fun. Think that's so much fun. Mm -hmm. They have incredible activities for kids for kids that day. Yes. Crafts and we can't All kinds forget of shopping. Things. Lots of shopping, lots of booze out here, so make sure that you come out. And, and you know what, also, when you see the community coming together, this city works really hard to have events, to get them engaged. Like right now, they have an ongoing bookmark contest. You can go on the Whale of a Day website, right. um, which is whaleofaday.com, mm -hmm. and you can have your elementary school age kids download a bookmark and they can, uh, there's going to be a contest, and of course the poster contest is also happening. There's so much to do, and there's also entertainment at this event, yes. too. Uh, let's see, uh, Jordan Bush is going to be playing the Sea Shanties, and he is so talented. He was at our virtual Well of a Day last year, so let's take a listen. My name is Jordan Bush and I learned sea shanties from coming to a whale of a day. My first one was in 2005, and there was a man here who played this exact same banjo named Jeff Adjusim, and um, he, he grew up in New Jersey, but or in the 1960s moved to San Pedro and picked up all sorts of sea shanties and made that his entire life, playing sea shanties on the boats over there at Port Sokol. And I saw him here at Whale of a Day and at the Palos Verdes Farmer's Market where I still play on Sundays. So here's a song. Here was one of my favorite Jeff songs um, when I was a little kid listening to him. Um, it's called Got a Whale of a Tale from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, 1952, I believe, uh, Disney movie. Here we go.
Got a whale of a tail to tell your lad. Got a whale of a tail or two. Got the flopping fish and the girls I've loved. And the nights like this with the moon above. It's a whale of a tail and it's all true, I swear by my tattoo. There was Mermaid Minnie. Met her off in Madagascar. She would kiss me any time that I would ask her. Then one evening, her flame of love blew out. Blow me down and pick me up. She swapped me for a trout. Got a whale of a tail to tell your lad. Got a whale of a tail or two. But the flopping fish and the girls I've loved. And the nights like this with the moon above. It's a whale of a tail and it's all true, I swear by my tattoo. There was Typhoon Tessie. Met her off the coast of Java. When we kiss eyed, bubble up like molten lava. Then one day she gave my young life blow me down and pick me up she was the captain's wife got a whale of a tail to tell you lad got a whale of a tail or two but the flopping fish and the girls i've loved and the nights like this with the moon above it's a whale of a tail and it's all true i swear by my tattoo Sailors would shudder when she'd whisper, hello, stranger. I'd buy her trinkets no sailor could afford. But when I had spent my last red cent, she tossed me overboard. Got a whale of a tail to tell you, lad. Got a whale of a tail or two. But the flopping fish and the girls I've loved and the nights like this with the moon above. It's a whale of a tail and it's all true, I swear. Happy whale of a day. And on that banjo note, we're going to wrap it up here with our sneak preview of the Whale of a Day celebration coming up Saturday, April 9th. We keep telling you, come on down from 10 to 4 and enjoy all of the fun. Remember, you can park free at the RPV City Hall. They've got shuttles coming over, so you're all set. Yes, and we want to give the website out one more time where you can get all the information you want about Whale of a Day. It's whaleofaday.com. With that, we're going to have a whale of a time coming up. That's right. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maria Soreo. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And we'll see you at Whale of a Day. Have me a wife in Portugal, but tonight she a widow will be. Well, the ocean waves may roll, and the stormy winds may blow. We poor sailors go skipping through the tops, while the land lovers lie down below, below, below. Ship. Yes, three times around spun she. Three times around spun our galleon ship till she sunk to the bottom of the sea. Well, the ocean waves may roll, let them roll. And the stormy winds may blow. We poor sailors go skipping through the tops while the land lovers lie down below. Below, below, land lovers lie down.